Verse 3, for all nations have drunk of the wine. So remember, all, remember that metaphorical symbolic picture at Revelation 17? All nations are drinking the drink that Babylon is giving to them, metaphorically speaking. This wine of the what? Wrath of her fornication. That's God's... Uh, so all this fornication. Remember, uh, body joining body. And body of a nation joining a body of a nation. See, uniting. Like the ecumenical movement, so to speak. United nations. They put the Pope as the head of the Union in Europe, actually. The confederation of all the nations in Europe. Which is really uh, alarming over there. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. That's right. All nations around the world joined body with the Roman Catholic Church. That's what it means. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich. <clears throat> so notice that merchants around the world, they are made rich through the abundance of her delicacies, through an overabundance, a richness of all the delicate things that she provided. So that's why people think that it's the United States of America. But to be very honest, is that if you look at a lot of the big businesses and even bankers among the conspiracy ladder, you're going to find out that a lot of their religion are Catholic. You go to Hollywood, Catholic. You go to a lot of businesses, you're going to find Catholics involved. So there is no doubt that the Catholic Church, uh, that the Catholic system has merchandise and richness. And an another great example is if you read the book Vatican Billions, Vatican Billions is a very alarming book about how wealthy the Roman Catholic Church system is. As a matter of fact, the CIA, uh, the CIA, it was founded under I, the name, if I recall, William Donovan, and he was actually uh, headed. Uh, he was actually part of the Knights of Malta. Knights of Malta is Catholic. They're perhaps the second most powerful being next to the Jesuits, perhaps. So you see over here that all around our world, that merchandise, commerce, business, you're going to see Catholics involved. Verse 4, this is where we end it. And this is the deep doctrine that I want to give. So let's end it here. I heard another voice from heaven. Now John hears another voice coming out of heaven. Saying, come out of her, my people. So God is telling the people to leave the Roman Catholic system. That ye be not partakers of her sins. God doesn't want the people to be part of her sins. <clears throat> And that ye receive not of her plagues. God doesn't want you to join the plague that the Lord's going to send upon them, his judgment. So here's something interesting, verse 3 and 4. This is proof this is not United States of America. You might say, why? Because what's wrong, what is the sin of making business and merchandise with other nations? That's how you work in a job. Our economy is shot because we're not doing that. So that is natural for business, commerce. What do you mean by doing this? Do you think that if you start an organization, a business organization, and then you want to make a deal in Europe and etc., that God says, you've sinned against me, come out of her, my people, before I judge you? No, so that's why you got to realize it makes more sense if it's the Roman Catholic Church system. If you join what the Roman Catholic Church system is providing for you. Join her system. See, that's what God is against. That's what God is against. Now, here's the deep doctrine. Did you notice this has come out of her who at verse 4? Did you notice that at verse 4? This is something very interesting. My people. Did you notice that? It's not just people. It's my people. So, there are Jews who were joined to this Roman Catholic Church system. Why? Because the Antichrist is a Jew, and that proves more that you can have a Jew by ethnicity join the Roman Catholic Church system. Right. Now, look at the book of Jeremiah 51. <clears throat> Jeremiah 51. This is the last passage, and thank you for your patience, and I'll let you go. There's a lot more interesting things, but we'll postpone that to next Revelation study. Let's look at Jeremiah, and then we'll look at chapter 51, Jeremiah, and then we'll look at chapter 51 over here. 
Jeremiah chapter 51. Now notice over here that the Lord, that he is judging against uh, Babylon for what they've done. Verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon. See that? And against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. Uh, let's keep reading over here. Uh, verse 4, Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel, now look at this. This is not just a B.C. timeline. You're going to notice a lot of future prophetic wording here. This seems more like a tribulation timeline. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Now this does not make sense at the B.C. timeline. If God is telling Israel to run away from Babylon, that's not true. God says, no, you have to go to Babylon. You have to submit to the authority. What is this referring to? A future timeline, future tribulation judgment of God's judgment on Babylon. And Israel has joined that. That's why God says, flee from her. Get out of her. Come out of her, my people, Revelation 18. Wow, isn't your King James Bible amazing? Now look at the rest of the wording. This is undoubtedly tribulation. And deliver every man his soul, verse 6. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's what? Ah, look at that. Now look at verse 7. This is even more convincing. Babylon hath been a what? Golden cup in the Lord's hand. Wow, wow, wow. That made all the earth what? Drunken. Boom. Right there. That's no doubt. That is no doubt talking about Revelation 18. Now, think about this. If these are referring to Jews who joined the Antichrist system, this supports what I mentioned to you, Revelation 11, and jump to Revelation 14. This shows over here that people who join the Antichrist system that the Lord is giving them a chance to repent. See that? That supports what I pointed out at Revelation 11 and Revelation 14. Because look at this, Revelation 14 verse uh, 6, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto who? them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Verse 7, fear God and give glory to him. Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7. Why is God giving the everlasting gospel to everyone around the world? That's everyone around the world. So why would God give the gospel to people who have the mark of the beast if they're already settled and done, right? See, if they're already settled and done, then why would God even bother giving them the gospel? Why would he tell them, fear God and give glory to him? If you look at Revelation 11, that's what a lot of them did, right? A lot of them, after they killed the two witnesses, they gave glory to God after that one. But look at verse 8, the timing. Look at this. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is what? Fallen, fallen. Boom, right there. Look at that. So God is saying, come out of her, my people. He's delivering that gospel at verse 6 and 7, right when Babylon was falling. How about that over there? Acts chapter 2, it was what? The gospel about repentance and baptism. Why? It is the same thing John the Baptist was talking about, repent and be baptized. Why? Because the Messiah is coming. It's continuing that teaching, that doctrine, because the Messiah, he is coming. That's why John the Baptist... He was giving a second Advent passage, not first Advent. John the Baptist saying, uh, make, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Because that passage is not first Advent, that second Advent, tribulation. The king was coming, but the Jews rejected him, right? So Acts chapter 2, they had the baptism again, but they rejected it. So what? That's why it is interesting, Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses, Dr. Upman mentioned that it is possible that they would be baptizing people. 
You might say, why is that? Well, think about the two people in your Bible who've been baptized, and that is Moses and Elijah. You didn't know that, did you? You didn't know that, did you? Uh, Moses, the Bible says when he went through the Red Sea, that was being baptized. Elisha told Naaman, get, get under Jordan, baptize seven times, and Elisha was what? The double spirit power of Elijah over there. And John the Baptist was coming with his baptism in the spirit and power of what? Elijah. And that's the first time uh, your Bible actually mentions baptized. In the Old Testament, we see Naaman baptized, dunk under, etc. But that word baptized started with John the Baptist, that exact word. Why? Because God, that is connected with Christ's second advent. That was, now, that was a great way to close. Let's close.